This happened almost four years ago in the early hours of New Year's Day. For reference, I was 17 at the time and in my senior year of high school. I'm a male, and I'm about 5'10 and weighed about 160 pounds at the time. I lived in the suburbs and I was at a New Year's party being held by my friend at his house, which was a 20 minute walk away from my house. It was about 1 in the morning and I was about to leave with another friend of mine who lived on the same block as me. My friend who was hosting the party asked if we would like a ride home, and in hindsight we probably should have accepted his offer. But our neighborhood was pretty safe, and we figured with the two of us walking together, no one would bother us. Plus there were probably other people at the party who needed a ride more than we did. We said our goodbyes to everyone and began our walk home. The road was predictably empty with no one but us walking along the sidewalk, and maybe the occasional car passing by. It was pretty well lit though, so we weren't walking in complete darkness. My friend wanted to pick up a pack of cigarettes on the way home, so we stopped off at a gas station along the way. When we got to the gas station it was nearly empty with only a woman at the pump filling up her car with gas, and a guy posted up in front of the store on his phone. We went inside and my friend picked up a pack of cigarettes. We walked out of the store and my friend immediately lights up a cigarette. We reach the sidewalk and we hear someone behind us yell, Hey wait! We looked behind us to see the guy who was in front of the store quickly walking towards us. He looked to be in his early to mid 20s. He was probably 5 foot 8 and maybe 140 pounds from the look of him. He approached us and asked if he could get a light. My friend and I didn't think much of it and he lit the guy's cigarette. The guy thanked him and my friend said you're welcome. We began walking away again and the guy continued to follow us asking where we were going. We told him we were heading home and asked him where he was going. He said his friends were at a party and he was heading back over there as he left to get some fresh air for a bit. He asked if we wanted to come to the party. This is officially the point where red flags start going off with this guy. Why the hell would a guy in his 20s ask two teenage boys if they wanted to go to a party with him? We told him bluntly that we didn't even know who he was, nor did we know anyone at the party he was talking about, so we weren't going. He starts laughing and says that we seemed like cool guys to party with. He told us we needed to let loose a little. My friend and I told him that we were 18 and 17, to see if maybe that would get him to leave us alone. He chuckled and said that age didn't matter to him, that he had a brother who was 16 and he partied with him and his friends all the time. Jesus Christ, can this guy take a hint? I thought to myself. We were a little less than 10 minutes away from our house, and we didn't want this creep following us all the way there. I told him firmly, Dude, we're not going anywhere with you. Now quit following us and screw off. He gets livid and starts screaming at us for being unfriendly, inconsiderate assholes, and that he was just trying to be nice. He then starts throwing racial slurs at my friend. It's probably worth mentioning by now that I'm white and my friend is black. My friend yells at him to get away from us before he cracks him in the face, and the guy proceeds to run away from us. My friend and I just looked at each other in complete disgust over what had just happened and spent the next five minutes walking and talking about the creepy guy. We both agreed that he was probably drunk or high from a New Year's party. Next thing we hear a car behind us, and it proceeded to slow down to match our pace. We see the window roll down to reveal the guy that we had just seen a few minutes earlier, with who we presumed to be two of his friends. One of which was a man who was probably about the same age as the guy, and a woman in the back seat who had to be in her mid-thirties. The guy tells us that we got off on the wrong foot and asked us once again to join them at the party. My friend and I looked at each other, and I whispered to him that we needed to get away from them. My friend tells them that we're not going with them, and to leave us alone already. The guy was silent for a few seconds and said, You're coming with us, one way or another. They pull over and quickly get out of the vehicle, which caused my friend and I to immediately go into flight mode. We turned right on a side block and my friend yelled, Run to the park, we'll lose them in there. We looked behind us and to our horror the three men were running right for us. We run into the park and we once again look behind us, and they're getting closer. We run into the dark thick patch of trees that covered a good portion of the west side of the park hoping to evade them. I was panicking at this point because I couldn't see a damn thing and I was worried that my friend or I would trip over something and get captured by one of these sick freaks who wanted to do who knows what with us. We hear one of them trip and fall behind us yelling, Fuck! And luckily we see light again, and we make it to another path in the park and we make a left onto that path. 
We hear yelling behind us and one of the guys said that they lost us. The woman yells to split up and search around the park for us. We bolt towards the bathroom which thankfully were open and we hide inside. We took a minute to catch our breath as our lungs were practically burning at that point. We should have called the cops and just hid there until they got there. But at the time we were so focused on getting the hell away from those crazy people that we decided to try and make our way to the nearest exit out of the park and run to my house. We waited for about two minutes and we bolted out of the bathroom and toward the park exit. Shortly after we exited the park we heard one of the guys yell behind us that he had found us and we were getting away. We looked behind us to see the guy in the distance starting to chase after us. We ran until we reached my house and I quickly opened the door, we ran inside, and I quickly locked it. We went into my living room and collapsed on the couch. We both sat there silently, trying to regain our energy and calm down after what had happened, hoping they didn't see where we ran to. I looked out the window several times over the course of 10 minutes, and thankfully they never showed up again. We talked about it, and we were glad that we were both okay and nothing bad happened to us. We were trying to figure out what they wanted with us. Did they want to kill us? Rob us? Have sex with us? God only knows. My friend hung around for another half hour before he insisted on heading home. He left and then I went to bed. I kept thinking about what had happened and pondered on what would have happened if they had caught me. Even as I'm recollecting this, I still have those thoughts. I eventually fell asleep and I woke and told my parents what had happened. They were thankful that my friend and I were okay, but were upset with us that we chose to walk home and should have accepted the lift from our other friend or even called them, and they would have picked us up. Regardless, we filed a police report, and I gave them all the information I could. Unfortunately, we never heard anything about it again, and I wonder sometimes what the hell they've been doing ever since. I really hope they haven't harmed another person after that. I can't express how thankful I am that we managed to get away from those freaks, and to this day, this incident is still the scariest thing that has ever happened to me in my life. This incident definitely made me more wary of my surroundings, and I try my best to avoid situations when I need to walk late at night, whether I'm by myself or not. This happened four years ago when I was in college. It was around 2am at my friend's parents' house who were very laid back. And that's an understatement. Myself, my cousin Ted, and his girlfriend at the time, Holly, were snoozing in the living room. A phone goes off that wakes Ted and I, and see it's Holly's phone. Holly is in a deep, pot-induced coma, so we ignore it and go back to sleep. The phone continues to ring, so Ted finally answers it. They've never been shy of looking into each other's phones, but don't abuse the privilege. He says hello a few times before a male voice asked for Holly. Ted immediately hung up and got suspicious as to why a man was calling Holly at 2am. He goes through her phone while I go to the bathroom. While washing my hands, Ted knocks on the door hard saying, Hey, we need to take her home now. So I dry my hands and he wakes her up and we all get in the car and drive off to her part of town. Holly keeps asking Ted what's wrong and what's going on. Ted finally blew up about the call, emails he found in her phone proving she had been prostituting herself on Craigslist again, again, and that he was done. I'm as quiet as a crypt keeper, and she's bawling her eyes out and losing her shit trying to explain. We get to her house and before I can even fully stop the car he tells her to get the fuck out and lose his number. She goes inside a snotty mess and we leave. When we pull up to his house we sit outside in my car for a while taking in what had just happened and giving him time to vent and tell me that this isn't the first time they've dealt with this. Out of nowhere a black town car pulls up to the right of us and Ted says, Oh shit. Three people, two men and an older woman, get out and surround the car. I can see that the younger of the two men has a firearm. The woman goes up to Ted's side of the car and starts yelling at him to take his ass whooping like a man. I start freaking out asking who these people are as the woman starts trying to yank my doors and punch my windows. Ted says it's Holly's mom and her stepdad and her cousin. When the mom punched my window a third time, I noticed the cousin laying his hand near his firearm. So I flight one and immediately put the car in reverse and drove backwards down the street to get away. 
I slid into a person's yard because of mud and kind of ruined their grass. I have since apologized and compensated for the damage, and took off when we see them run after the car and give chase. I had never been so panicked for my life. We're flying down regular roadways ranging 50 to 60 miles per hour. I'm running red lights, taking last minute turns. I must have burned all the tread off my tires because my car skidded a good handful of times. They chased us for 22 minutes while the whole time I'm praying, where the hell is a cop when you need one? When we got to a quiet neighborhood I knew well, we turned down a street heavily covered in trees and Ted said, turn off your lights and stay off the brake. I do as I'm told and we roll down the street slowly. I stared into my rearview mirror as we saw them drive past the road that we were on, very slowly, but thankfully they didn't see us. When we were sure we lost them, I parked and started yelling at Ted asking them why the hell they were chasing us and what was going on. As I'm having a panic attack, his phone rings and it's the mom. He answers and they say they want to meet and talk and get Holly's phone back. In the heat of everything idiot Ted forgot to give Holly her phone back. I said I'm not meeting them without a cop present, so we tell them to meet us at a local gas station that we know cops frequent. When we got there thankfully there was an officer on duty. They arrived two minutes after we did and Ted got out to deal with them in plain view of a cop and camera outside of the gas station. I noticed the cousin was not in the car when they pulled up. I couldn't make out everything that was said, but Ted handed over her phone. They talked for about 15 minutes with her flailing her hands, getting in his face and even pointed at a cop in what looked like she was going to say something to them. When it was over he got back in and we drove off. Apparently when we dropped Holly off she walked into her house crying. Her family was up and immediately asked what was wrong and Holly wouldn't say anything about it. Just cried. So in their minds they jumped to the conclusion that Ted had hit her. She didn't even try to correct them. When he tried to show her mom proof of her ways, she completely rug swept and tried to make him the reason for all of it. I told him he was better off without that crazy and dodged a bullet. The next week was spring break and we took a much needed trip to Colorado. If you enjoyed this oddly specific video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And if you would like a chance to have your story featured in an upcoming video, make sure you email it to yourmaker6260 at gmail.com. And I do also want to say if you've submitted a story via Facebook, please forward that to my email. So in the story about where they had to pull off and turn off their lights, crazy little side story, but uh, I've actually had something like that similar happen to me when I was a kid. I forget the exact situations and I don't want to get into too much detail, but my mom and I were being chased by uh, these other people. It was a crazy couple. I was, man, I was so scared. It was crazy. Uh, I was probably like seven at the time and it's two in the morning or something like that. And they're chasing us down this road and we, we lived in the woods almost in uh, Fort Bragg, California. It's not the military base. It's just kind of a wooded local town. There used to be a lot of logging. But we pulled off on one of the roads and actually pulled into my grandma's driveway and cut off the lights real quick and had that exact scenario where they actually drive by not knowing where you went. So that crap actually happens even though it sounds crazy and it is extremely scary. So anyways, that's just a side note. If you want to help support the channel, make sure you hit the sponsor button down below and check that out. It's got a couple of little perks. You'll get early access to my next video. We just did a private live stream day before yesterday or something like that. That was a bit of fun, and it's remaining unlisted for any sponsors that want to go check it out. I will catch everyone in the next video, and uh, have a good one. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true. Bad bye. <laughs>